There are over 13,000 cards for duelists to create the perfect deck. Many of those cards made their very first appearance in the anime, but for some they would never cross the bridge to the physical card game. Have these cards been lost to time, or are they far too powerful to introduce to today's metagame? The time has come to answer these questions once and for all. Duel Monsters is over. Welcome to the Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Chaz Princeton, John Manjome, the original rival to Jaden Yuki in the GX anime who was quickly overshadowed by the likes of Bastion and Zane. Disregarding his swaying importance to the series, Chaz the Chad Princeton is one of my favorite characters from GX, and he makes a perfect character for the season premiere. Having an entire fully constructed 40 card main deck and 2 card extra deck worth of anime exclusive cards, I won't waste any more time. Let's Chaz it up. Chaz would be quickly likened to Seto Kaiba, sporting the original XYZ Dragon Cannon series and the new VW Tiger Catapult duo. But Chaz also played his own dedicated archetype of Union monsters known as Beatrons. Rolling in with Beatron 1, Beetletop, a level 4 Earth Machine normal monster with 1700 attack and 1400 defense. Typically in this series, there isn't much to say about vanillas outside of them being decent beat sticks for the time. And even though there are far better options on that front, number one here is a key player in the Beatron strategy. Let's find out why. Beatron 2, Electric Boogaloo! Uh, what I meant was. Beatron 2 Beetle Turbo is a level 4 Earth Machine Union effect monster with 1500 attack and 1800 defense. It has the standard soft once per turn Union equip, unequip, and destruction substitute effect clauses and can only equip itself to Beatron 1. While equipped to a monster by this card's effect, that monster gains 400 attack and defense. Beatron 3 Spider Base is another level 3 Earth Machine Union effect monster with 1000 attack and 2000 defense. And of the two times that Chaz used this card in the anime, its effect was never utilized. However, they seem to be a carbon copy of the XYZ Dragon Cannon lineup, so we can assume that Spider Base carries a similar, if not the exact same effect as Beetle Turbo. By no means are they the worst set of Union monsters we've ever seen, but they are painfully average. Average. I'm sure there's someone out there who wants to see these cards more than anything, and I'm led to believe that that person is a Girgia player. Having been clearly modeled after the XYZ lineup, it only makes sense for them to have their own mass fusion, and that comes in the form of Assault Cannon Beetle, a level 8 Earth Machine fusion effect monster with 2400 attack and 2800 defense, whose fusion materials are the three Beatron monsters, and this card can only be special summoned from your extra deck by returning those monsters you control to the main deck. And on a non once per turn effect, you contribute one monster to inflict 800 damage to your opponent. Well, it copies about everything from Dragon Cannon, except the good parts. I want to give credit for the summoning condition, but it suffers the same tribulation as the original Neos fusions, having no efficient means to retrieve your Union monsters and the vanilla after they've been returned to the deck. Being Earth monsters, they're left out of the Union hangar parties, and I would say that Union Carrier can aid in their endeavors, but you know, the card is freaking banned. But the fun doesn't stop there, because this archetype also has their own counterpart to the final VWX YZ fusion, and it all starts with Front Change, a normal spell card which gives you the option to activate one of its two effects. You contribute one Assault Cannon Beetle to Special Summon one Combat Scissor Beetle from your extra deck, or you contribute one Combat Scissor Beetle to Special Summon one Assault Cannon Beetle from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Okay, I like where this is going, and the man, or in this case the machine of the hour, is Combat Scissor Beetle, a level 8 Earth Machine Fusion Effect Monster with 3600 attack and 1800 defense. And this card cannot be special summoned except with the effect of Front Change. When this card destroys a monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, inflict 1000 damage to your opponent. Never mind, it sucks. I mean, it is certainly easier to bring out when compared to VWXYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon, but it also isn't offering much of anything better or game-changing. You're swapping the BLS effect from Dragon Catapult for a barely noticeable stat increase and some additional burn damage. That being said, things like this do make me wish we could retroactively add cards and archetypes to legacy formats like Goat and Edison, because the Beatron archetype may have performed exceptionally well during those formats. At least back then, you wouldn't get laughed at for setting a giant rat to search your Union monsters. 
Or at least that would be the most suitable home for them, if not for a generic union support card from Chaz that gives Union Hanger a run for its money. Different Dimension Hanger, a continuous spell card that upon activation lets you banish up to three level four or lower union monsters from your deck. If you normal or special summon a monster mentioned in the card text of any of the union monsters banished, you can special summon them and monsters summoned this way cannot attack or be tributed. Throw in an unexpected die to turbo out your vanilla Beatron and you can summon both of your union monsters with ease. Keep in mind that there's also no restriction on the names that you banish from this effect, so you can put away duplicates. Not only securing ammo for your first stage fusion, but also thinning out the deck by a respectable margin. Without this card, the deck is pretty mediocre and fails in comparison with XYZ. But with this card, well, it still fails because XYZ would also have access to it, but it's a lot better than it was. And that's all we can ask for. Beatrons are fairly decent for what they are. On the subject of the XYZ lineup, VWXYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon has its very own anime exclusive support card, which I'm sure makes at least three or so people happy. Dimensional Catapult, an equipped spell card that can only be equipped to VWXYZ. By targeting one in your graveyard, then special summoning it and equipping it with this card. The equipped monster's effects are negated and it gains piercing battle damage. When this card is removed from the field, VWXYZ is banished. I'm split on this one. I half expected for this card to be having the attack of VWXYZ, so the fact that it doesn't is actually quite nice. Swapping its original effect for just straight piercing damage isn't really doing anything. You're not gaining much, but you're also not losing out on a whole lot. It's interesting. But if that's not weird enough for you, the individual monsters of the lineup also have their own anime exclusive support card for some reason, and practical is about the last word I would use to describe it. Hyper Coat, a continuous trap card which is activated by targeting one face-up level 4 light machine union or normal monster you control, those being any of your VWXYZ materials, and equip it to this card. It gains 500 attack and is unaffected by your opponent's spell, trap, and monster effects. When it is removed from the field, destroy this card. I get what it's trying to do, and I'm not mad at it, but rarely do you want to be in the position that you weren't able to go into your fusions with this specific deck. Your goal isn't to sit on an X-Head Cannon or a W-Wing Catapult. I suppose it comes in handy in a pinch, but I really can't see this having been run during the early days of XYZ or any time after. Uh. Hello? Is anyone there? I could have sworn that I heard something. Well, my dual disc is still here. Oh wait, I need to check on my rare card. Well, at least that's safe. Lady. The White Knights are another mini archetypal series found in the fickle deck composition of the Chaz. Honestly, White Knights couldn't be a more fitting name for these chivalrous lads. White Knight Gardna is a level 4 light warrior effect monster with mystical elf stats, and if you would take battle damage from a battle involving a White Knight monster you control, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. I don't dislike the effect, but it's completely useless on the field. White Knight Lancer is a level 4 light warrior effect monster with 1500 attack and 0 defense, and this monster inflicts piercing battle damage. Wow! White Knight Swordsman is another level 4 light warrior effect monster with 1200 attack and defense, but don't even bother summoning this one, because while this card is in your graveyard, all White Knight monsters you control gain 300 attack, and that's it. That's the whole effect. And lastly, White Knight Lord, a level 7 light warrior effect monster with 2000 attack and defense. Already off to a terrible start with this one, but I'm sure the effect will make up for it. This card cannot be tributed for a tribute summon or set. Okay. During your end phase, if this card did not attack this turn, take 800 damage. Hello darkness, my old friend. 
This card cannot be destroyed by battle and you take no battle damage from battles involving this card. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflict 300 damage to your opponent. When this card is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, inflict 1000 damage to your opponent. What a waste of two tributes. How do you so perfectly encompass incel behavior into a card effect? I'm actually amazed, it's flawless in all of the wrong ways. Incels can also be referred to as the gatekeepers of negative Riz, and their sole supporting back row is fittingly named Sealed Gate, a normal trap card that only activates when destroyed while set on your field. You can then banish one White Knight Swordsman, White Knight Lancer, and White Knight Gardna from your graveyard to special summon one White Knight Lord from your deck. Seeing that two out of your three base level White Knights prefer to be in the graveyard, this card makes better use of those characteristics. I also can't deny that it's a better summoning condition than just Tribute Summoning Lord, but oh boy, these cards collectively are just as useless as incels in real life. Don't be a White Knight. The Miladies don't need protecting. I don't know about you, but I need a palate cleanser after that. LV monsters were a failed mechanic from early Yu-Gi-Oh and Chaz was clearly an advocate for making them better. I wouldn't say that his exclusive support would have made them tier 1 or anything, however, Level Bond is a normal trap card whose effect lets you banish two LV monsters with the same name from your graveyard, your opponent then draws two cards. Then you can special summon one LV monster from your deck with the same name as the banished monsters, ignoring its summoning conditions. That monster's effects are negated and it cannot attack this turn. Is it the best LV support card? Well, not by a long shot. Wanna know why I like this card? Based on its effect, this is one of the seldom examples from the early era of an anime character actually running more than one copy of a card that isn't just three copies of a monster for a big fusion summon. You'd need to have three copies of the LV monster to even activate this effect. Damn it, Chaz, you really came through for me. Let's keep that energy up. Level Copy is a normal spell card that special summons one LV monster that has the same name as a monster that you control from your hand or deck. Yes! The only improvement I could make to this is making it a quick play so that you could turbo out a low level LV monster that can level up during the standby phase, like the Chaz Signature Arm Dragon level 3. I would say ignore the summoning conditions so you can easily get to your higher levels, but I can admit that that probably would have been a bit too powerful for the time. So far, these would make for pretty solid modern support for the LV mechanic. Level down, not level down, is a normal spell card that when activated has you reveal one LV monster in your hand and reduce its level by two until the end phase. Eh, you're losing me a bit. I like the idea of this because a lot of the mid-level monsters in each subseries of LV aren't required to be summoned by meeting their special condition, but can be normal summoned. But if that's what we're going for, basically skipping the crawl phase, there's no reason to run this over cost down. The last thing you should be doing is willfully giving hand knowledge to your opponent. Level Soul is a normal trap card and when activated you contribute one monster and banish one LV monster from your graveyard, then special summon one monster from your deck that is mentioned in the card text of that banished monster, ignoring its summoning conditions. I like this one, it's perfectly suitable for any LV deck regardless of the series that you're running and can make summoning your highest level less of a pain. My only complaint would be that it's slow because it's a normal trap card, but that kind of fits into the playstyle of LVs, slow and grindy. I definitely feel better after looking at these cards. Let's ruin that by looking at the generic cards played by Daddy Princeton. First up is a clear and direct counter to Jaden's Hero Fusion base deck in Fusion Buster, an equipped spell card that increases the equipped monster's attack by 300. And on a soft once per turn, you can target one face-up fusion monster your opponent controls and return it to the extra deck. Then, if all of the fusion material monsters that were used to fusion summon it are in your opponent's graveyard, special summon them to your opponent's side of the field. When your opponent activates a polymerization, you can send this face-up card to the graveyard to negate the activation of that card and destroy it. I'm dumbfounded, seeing an equipped spell of all things be packed with some competent responsive effects. Not something you see every day, or at all for that matter. I like the versatility of its interaction with the opponent's graveyard because you can either spin the problematic fusion monster and deal with its weaker materials, or in the best case scenario, you were able to pull one of its materials out of the graveyard before this effect went live, meaning your opponent gets 
nothing. Realistically, that last effect of negating the original polymerization will maybe go off every 1 in 10,000 duels, but not a bad trump card to have either. The artwork of this card though, featuring Buster Blader and Cyber and Dragon provides some very interesting lore though, suggesting that at one point Yugi faced off against Zane. I want to see that, forget Yugi vs Jaden. Next is Buried Destiny, a normal spell card that can only be activated if a spell card your opponent already used in the duel is not in their graveyard. Target one card with the same name in your graveyard and return it to the hand. Well, now I have a headache. This card is just an exercise in trust between you and your opponent unless the designated spell card was banished from your opponent's graveyard. If they returned it to the deck or hand, it only serves as a ruling nightmare for judges at a YCS. On the other hand, my different dimension deck now has another annoying party trick. Speaking of annoying, Cemetery Change is a normal spell card with a 1000 life point activation cost. It destroys all monsters on the field, then you switch graveyards with your opponent. <laughs> What's wrong with you, bro? What the heck? You champion, bro. You champion! <laughs> this was actually the card that let Chaz fulfill the conditions of Buried Destiny. I dislike this greatly. I voiced my disgust for cards that have players swapping cards that aren't on the field, and even though both graveyards are in clear sight of both players, something will inevitably go wrong. We as Yu-Gi-Oh players are not very smart. Getting to a more commonly used card, Quick Rush is a normal spell card and when activated you select and activate one of its two effects. You can either draw one card and it doesn't even matter what the next effect is because this is just upgraded upstart goblin and I love it. But you can instead target one face up level 4 or lower monster you control, it can attack this turn regardless of any effects or conditions. If I understand this correctly, that lets a targeted level 4 monster bypass something like Gravity Bind. And because that is the only argument in favor of the secondary effect, it could have been dropped from the card entirely and nothing in the realm of relevance would have been lost. I can say with certainty that had this card been released in the GX era of the physical game, it would have stayed alongside Upstart Goblin on the ban list. Can we keep the power level going? Desperado Manager is a normal spell card that can only be activated if you have one or more cards in your hand other than this card. Draw two cards, then return three cards from your hand to the top of your deck. It's a weirdly conditional, somewhat but not really counterpart to Graceful Charity. I can't even decide if it's good or bad. Putting three cards, or any number of cards, back to the top of your deck isn't something that duelists are clamoring for, unless you're playing exactly Infernity. Haha! <laughs> You thought they were gone just because DM is over. Guess again, pal. Also, if anyone said anything about putting Garnets back in your deck, grow up. I'm sure there's something you could do with this if the Exodia players want to chime in now, but cards like Reload or Magical Mallet, which Chaz also played the latter, just feel like better options to accomplish the same goal. Direct Border is a continuous trap card that prevents both players from declaring a direct attack with monsters with 1,000 or more attack. When you take battle damage by a direct attack from a monster with less than 1,000 attack, draw one card. I don't know, can it really be considered a floodgate? It isn't really stopping anything. It really is just there and every part of it is irrelevant. Truth be told, I'd rather deal with floodgates like this because today's floodgates suck. And I'll tell you, that's not up for negotiation. But if you're ever so inclined to argue, allow me to introduce you to the Goblin Negotiator, a continuous spell card that offers a soft once per turn attack negation if a monster you control is targeted for said attack. If this effect is used, your opponent gets to draw one card. If you've ever wanted to run a worse version of Scrap Iron Scarecrow, mixed with a little dark bribe, this is the card for you. Needless to say, the Goblin needs to quit his day job. Something to always remember when deck building is that if you are creating a deck that requires your opponent to interact with you, it's a bad deck. The out tier deck should never be not playing the game. Apparently, Chaz missed that memo with our next three cards. Dramatic Crossroads, a normal trap card which you can activate only when you take battle damage. Your opponent selects and activates one of the following effects. Discard one random card, or your opponent looks at your hand, selects one card in it, and adds it to their hand. It's a one for one trade and card advantage, so I suppose it could be worse, but you know, the last effect makes my teeth itch. Love Letter is a normal spell card that can only be activated if you control a monster and a face down spell or trap card. Your opponent selects and activates one of the following effects. Take control of one monster your opponent controls, or take control of one set spell or trap card your opponent controls. No. No, I refuse to believe that this is real life. 
I know that we have gimmicky cards that want to be given to your opponent, and that's the only way they're even feasibly usable. We are so much better than that. But perhaps your opponent's only option for back row was Hidden Wish, a normal spell card, and when this card is returned from your opponent's side of the field to its owner's hand, inflict 1,000 damage to your opponent and gain 1,000 life points. Well, that would be okay if I had a way to get it back to my fucking head! Dress Up is an equipped spell card that increases the attack of the equipped monster by 300. On a soft once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls and change its battle position. If the equipped monster attacks, it must select your opponent's attack position monster with the lowest attack as that attack target. Obviously, we're getting dressed up for the annual gathering of the Goof Troop, so many words and it does nothing. I'm sacrificing Chthonian Soldier and all the cards in my hand in order to summon Infernal Incinerator! One of Chaz's iconic monsters from the early GX episodes was Infernal Incinerator, a standalone monster with no outside support. Technically. I say technically because Chaz also had three back row cards that share the Infernal name, but really had no relation to Incinerator. Infernal Gauntlet is an equipped spell card which grants the equipped monster an additional attack during the battle phase by tributing a monster as a non-once-per-turn effect. But don't think for a second that you'll reliably pull off any OTKs with this effect because the equipped monster cannot attack your opponent directly. Not a bad effect by any stretch. Really, the card's biggest detriment is being an equip spell. Regardless, this plays nicely with the effect of Incinerator, who loses 500 attack for each monster you control. This equipped card allows you to clear your field for when you're ready to close out the game with Incinerator. Infernal Transaction is a normal spell card that lets you special summon one monster from your opponent's graveyard with 2,000 or more attack to their side of the field, then add one spell card from your graveyard to your hand. Also pretty good. Summoning a high attack monster to your opponent's side of the field sounds like the wrong move, but this grants Infernal Incinerator an attack boost from its own effect, and depending on what you summon to your opponent's field, Incinerator can walk right over it. And recovering any spell card from your graveyard is fantastic. Infernal White is a continuous spell card where you are forced to play with your hand revealed. Please! No! During each of your opponent's standby phases, inflict 600 damage to your opponent. Unfortunately, the Infernal Archetype goes out with a whimper. Even for the GX era speed of the game, that amount of burn damage occurring that slowly would be laughed out of locals. Not to mention that giving your opponent full hand knowledge is a stupid concept. It just gets worse with each era of the game. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for! Duh! That's right, the Ojamas, an archetype that Chaz is very fond of. Get lost! Get lost! Let's preface the mayhem with Mecha Ojama King Transformation, a normal spell card that special summons one Mecha Ojama King from your hand, deck, or graveyard by tributing one face-up Ojama King. Not only has Ojama King slimmed down significantly based on the card artwork, but he has reached peak. Male performance in the form of Mecha Ojama King, a level 6 light machine effect monster with 0 attack and 3000 defense. This card cannot be normal summoned or set. This card cannot be special summoned except with Mecha Ojama King transformation. On a soft once per turn, you can special summon one Ojamashin yellow, Ojamashin green, or Ojamashin black from your hand or deck. Ojamashin's green and black were never shown, but we can assume they share the effects of our yellow friend who made quite a few appearances in the anime. Ojamashin Yellow is a level 3 light machine effect monster with 0 attack and 100 defense. And when this card is summoned, special summon as many Ojamashin Yellow tokens as possible with the same level, type, attribute, attack, defense, and effects as this card. You take no battle damage from battles involving this card, meaning you take no battle damage from the tokens. And when this card is destroyed, inflict 300 damage to your opponent. 
I really like the improvement on a base Ojama. All of the Ojama machines, including their tokens, basically carry the effects of the tokens summoned by Ojama Trio. So on average, you're putting 9 to 1500 points of extra burn damage on board that can go off at any time if your opponent decides to ignore the unmatched battle prowess of your Ojama machines. Bring these to the game immediately. The original Ojamas also had their own catalog of anime exclusive support, and I honestly prefer all of them over the weird crossover stuff we got that tied in Armed Dragons and VWXYZ. Starting with Ojama Delta Thunder! With two exclamation points so you know it's important. A normal spell card that can only be activated if you control an Ojama Green, Ojama Yellow, and Ojama Black. Your opponent takes 500 damage for each card in their hand and on their side of the field. Then you can send from your hand or deck one Ojama Delta Hurricane to the graveyard and destroy all cards your opponent controls. Yeah, Ojama OTK doesn't sound so funny anymore, does it? This is dangerous, and I want three copies. Ojama Delta Wear is a normal trap card that special summons Ojama Yellow, Ojama Green, and Ojama Black from your graveyard that were destroyed by battle this turn. I love cards like this, simple and potent in theme recovery, and I wish that more archetypes had cards exactly like this. Yes, trap cards have to fight for relevance these days, and if they don't function like a quick play spell card, they're thrown in the trash. But I still hold my Waboku and trap hole with pride, and will tussle with anyone who looks at me funny. In relation to getting thrown in the trash, Ojamas had this charming dynamic with their anime back row where they're constantly getting yo-yoed in and out of the graveyard. Ojama Ride is our first example of an in effect, a normal spell card that requires you to send one Ojama Yellow, Ojama Black, and Ojama Green from your hand to the graveyard to special summon up to three level four or lower machine type union monsters from your deck in face up defense position. Those monsters cannot change their battle positions. Ah, I see where the inspiration came from for the support we would get in the physical game. It's a great card, but I'm not happy for what it brought about. Of course, this card was intended to combo with Chaz's union lineups, but in the real world, this card can also grab the A, B, and C monsters, not that they need any additional help with that, and it can summon the Machina unions, some Vylons, and even the new retrains of the Z-Metal tank and Y-Dragon head. Please don't make Oja Machina a thing. Moving on, Oja Mandala is a normal spell card, and at the cost of 1,000 life points, you can special summon one each of Ojama Yellow, Green, and Black from your graveyard. Another example of the out effect and a better version of Delta Wear. Keep them coming. Oja Marble is a normal trap card which can be activated only when a face-up Ojama monster you control is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, which mind you does include the Ojama machines. Return that card to the deck and draw two cards, then discard one. I point out the Ojama machines as those would be the best variant to use this card with. Let them get destroyed, burn your opponent, get a draw, rinse and repeat. Oja Marking is a normal trap card that suddenly has me down bad for Ojama Yellow, and when this set card on the field would be sent to the graveyard, banish it instead. When a monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard to target one Ojama monster in your graveyard and special summon it. I'd say run Foolish Burial Goods to just put this in the graveyard, but why do that when the alternative is not running either? It's the only Ojama support that I don't like. And our final card of the week isn't an Ojama card by name, but aside from featuring Ojama Yellow putting on the performance of a lifetime, no other deck could dream of having a card as unique as this. Pride Shout, a continuous trap card whose effect activates each time a monster with zero attack successfully attacks your opponent directly. Inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's defense. Like I said, it's unique. I don't think we have a single card in the game that has an effect even remotely comparable to this. I love the idea of attacking your opponent directly with all colors of Ojama, then you're suddenly knocking for 5,000 effect damage. And because this is effect damage, it also gets around some cards that respond to specifically battle damage, which is a nice touch. I'm introducing a brand new addition to each episode for Season 2, and that is the patent-pending Purple Pineapple Grading Scale. I'll be taking the total of each Duelist cards in every episode and getting a percentage of how many cards that I personally think are good and should get an express pass to physical print. Anything 70% and above is a passing grade. So, of the 42 anime exclusive cards played by Chaz, he gets a 57, with 24 cards that I think should be imported to the physical game. I wonder who our first passing grade will go to, but 
That's going to wrap up the season premiere of The Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Let me know your thoughts. What is your favorite Chaz Princeton card, and which of his anime exclusives do you want to see in the next Animation Chronicles? Drop a comment down below. If you like the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV. Signing off.